So I had this dream, literally like about 20 minutes ago, woke me up out of my sleep. It's uh, April 22nd and it was like 6 when I woke up. Haven't seen any even in a long time, so I hope everyone is well. All of you. Um, this real was so, this dream was so real. It was so vivid. And that's why I'm doing this video. I feel like there's something I need to tell all of you guys. And that's why I dreamt it. It was an interesting dream. Um, not everyone from our class was in it. Doesn't mean they're not significant, everyone is. But uh, some people that were in the dream were Um, I'm trying to remember, I just woke up, so this is about as raw as it gets. Um, all I did is just got all my recording stuff ready and got ready to shoot this video. Um, so anyways, there were, there were many of us in this room, um, not sure where we were, but we were all drinking. Um, and it had, the setting was... Basically, it almost looked like a cafeteria with a bunch of chairs, almost. Maybe not that large, maybe a smaller room than a cafeteria. Um, but it has. it was like we were all hanging out without significant others, almost like a class reunion without significant others. And um, we just were talking about life, talking about, you know, what was going on, catching up, which was pretty cool. But after we had, you know, been reacquainted and talked for a while, I brought up the question, you know, I said, we're, we're all getting a, like a lot older. You know, most of us are probably 35, 36, maybe some are 34. And I asked everybody in the dream, I said, you know, actually, I think I asked you this first. Now, I mean, it was a general question for everybody, but I said, what do you guys think the the point of life is and what do you think happens after we die like we get such a short time here on earth you know it could be five years ten years um, 80 years maybe a hundred years maybe 120 if you're one of the very few and I, I began to ask everyone that question and uh, some told me oh, I don't think anything happens some were like I'm not sure you know, honest, good answers. And so after everyone had answered, I mentioned how it would be so sad if this life is all we have. You know, I guess not everyone thinks about it, and I hadn't for a long time, but if you think about it, even if we have 35 years here, that's basically nothing in the grand scheme. If you have 40 years, if you have 10 years especially right you know obviously if you're watching this you're still alive and you know if you're my classmate you're much older than that but even if we had another two years and this was it you had this life to live and that was it and there's no coming back so you know that was it's kind of heavy i know but this is what i dreamt about and i i felt compelled to uh to make this video after my dream because it was so real and it woke me up out of my sleep so I wanted to make this video for you guys because I thought that it was intended you know when I had woken up from my dream I thought to myself wow I haven't thought about them in a while hopefully they're all well I wish there was a way I could tell them this you know what I had dreamt and uh, so after I asked uh, the question about what people think happens after we're out of here, you know, I began to explain, you know, how sad, like I had already, I just previously, previously said, how sad it would be if, if this was it, you know, and 
if this was the only life we have to live and it would just make me think what's the significance you know you may be remembered for a generation or so and even some that have made history are, are remembered but most 99 percent of people aren't going to remember you know anything significantly significantly important about you i shouldn't say 99 percent. most people aren't going to care i mean if you make a good impact in the world you'll at least be remembered from some things but it's not like they personally knew you right it's not like they knew what your voice sounded like um your mannerisms they they obviously know some things about you that maybe have been written down or now in video form these days or audio but anyways so i felt compelled after I had woken up from this dream to at least share my heart with you guys. Um, there was a piece of information that was shared with me on this topic that had more value than I could have ever believed. And I don't think I really wanted to hear it at the time. I don't think I was really thinking about anything um, that had to do with it at that time. But the most important thing I found out in life is that we are valuable, each and every one of us. Um, that's why this message, I mean, this message is for my classmates, but this message is for humanity. Humanity is valuable. You know, obviously there are some that do terrible things um, in this world. And I can understand where we'd say, oh, they definitely devalue anything they do touch, you know, interact with. But we were created with a purpose. We were, we were created to be significant. Um, and, you know, thinking about dying and that's it. If we die and that's it, 35, 40, 70, 80, 100 years, you never exist again. If that's true, then I can't see so much value in our, our lives here. You know, we can say, oh, we'll make the world a difference and this and this and that, which I'm not saying that can't be done. Obviously, we can make a difference. But in general, your life after that amount of time can almost be considered worthless because you're not alive anymore. You don't exist anymore, which is a crazy thought, right? So anyways, kind of getting off on a tangent. To get more to the point, Somebody had told me that I was significant and that I was important and they told me that there were some things in my life that I'd probably have to change in order to maybe accept what they were going to say. But what they had told me is, you know, this life doesn't have to be it. You know, after you die, this this isn't it. Um, I just was like, okay, that's fine. Um... So they told me about a man named Jesus and they said, they said, there is a reason for your life and you were created. You, you aren't an accident. You aren't some random chance that occurred that when you die, there's no significance. Um, cause you're just going to complete, you know, the science cycle, life and death. And, uh, so you know, he told me that, and he said that God created you, created you with purpose. He loves you, but your life has been in rebellion to him um, from this point, and even till now, obviously, when he was talking to me. He told me that what I needed to do was, you know, turn from my way of living and, and pursue a different, a different way. And that different way was through Jesus. And so I was like, okay, so who's Jesus? So the Bible talks about Jesus. There's much to say, but basically he was God in the flesh, you know, like one of us, God in human form, you know, fully man, fully God, which is an interesting concept to think, you know, the creator of the world being inside of a human body and walking with his creation, but that's the concept. So I said, okay, well, this Jesus guy, why does that matter? What significance does that have to me? I mean, I don't, that's cool. Okay. Jesus lived on earth. He was God in the flesh. Okay. What, what does that matter? Well, 
the significance is what he did. Um, he just had a, a wonderful, um, some would say a wonderful life. A lot of his life was wonderful in what he did for people, um, how he taught people. But the main significance of his life was to die to make us right with God. So there's this issue called sin, and it's kind of an archaic word these days, but sin is very real. We see it all around us. We see it in our personalities. You know, we see it in our lives. Sin is lawlessness, essentially. And if, you know, if you think, oh, sin, I don't believe in sin. That's just goofy, archaic word. Look at the world around you. If you just just look for a second, all the selfishness, all the murder, all the theft, all the slander, all the gossips even, um, that's what sin is. And it kills people, you know. It may not kill you instantly and you actually die, but it's what destroys mankind. And we have this bent towards sin, humans do. I mean, I think if, uh, if we self-examine, if we examine ourselves, we'll see that there, you know, a lot of times we, we just tend to do what we want. We're selfish, you know, that's, that's mankind. We, we want what we want. We want to do what makes us feel better. We want to do anything for ourselves, right? I mean, selfish. So, and kind of going back to uh, how we needed to change, the concept is repentance is the word. And basically, the concept of repentance is living our lives pursuing righteousness instead of, you know, our own will and our own desires. And basically, that would be following Jesus. And we'll get to, why would you follow Jesus? Well, if he's God and created the whole earth and lived on the earth as, you know, as fully man and fully God, he'd, he'd be pretty significant to follow. Um, but so, so Jesus, the thing that is very significant besides him being God is when he lived on the earth, he didn't sin. He was God. So God is good and God can't sin. He, he's unlike us. We're the imperfect creation. Um, so, imperfect in our nature, you know, made in his image, the Bible says, but imperfect in nature, where, like I said, we have this bent towards sin. We just constantly go to it. It's just, I mean, if something's in your nature, you just, you do what's in your nature, right? So, when Jesus lived his perfect life, never sinned, he became a perfect sacrifice for sin so that he could atone or make make right what was wrong, um, what was between God and man. Because our sin, it separates us from God. Our imperfections, his holiness, he's so holy, our sin makes it where the relationship just can't be, you know. So what Jesus ended up doing is being a sacrifice for those sins. He ended up being just disgustingly murdered. He was scourged by the Romans, and if anybody knows how brutal the Romans were, um, they were pretty good at torturing people. So they ripped the flesh from his body, and the Bible even said they, they ripped off his beard, beating him. So Christ ended up being beaten brutally, and then they crucified him. And I don't know how much everyone knows about crucifixion, but it's a very miserable death. Especially miserable if you've been scourged by the Romans before you're going to be hung on that cross. So, anyways, Jesus did that so that we could, if we have faith in him and want to follow him and want to live a, a different life, he did that so that we could be made right with God so that we could restore um, that we could be restored to that relationship so when Jesus died on the cross and it's and I mean some people like to debate Jesus dying on the cross but 
any scholar, secular, not, will agree that Jesus died. I guess maybe these days some don't. But it is pretty much universally agreed. Obviously, he died on the cross. Um, somebody that was had their flesh ripped off and was just bleeding out and then crucified by the Romans. I think the Romans would have been pretty offended if they said that they didn't know how to kill a person. <laughs> they definitely knew how to kill kill people. So anyways, Jesus died on the cross. And he had a bunch of followers, the people that saw what he did. Jesus healed many. He cast out demons out of people. He did miraculous things. He taught people about God because he is God and he was God in the flesh. So after he died, you know, three days later, some of his women followers um, went to his tomb, you know, with spices and such. Wanted to see him, obviously. And there was a stone that had been in front of the tomb. Romans were watching guards, so no, because Jesus was a pretty, pretty big deal to make sure, you know, no one would come near him. And the f three days later, these women went to the tomb and he wasn't there. And uh, so then some of the uh, men followers called his disciples went and uh, they ended up uh, not seeing him there either. I said, where is he? Like, you know, so long story short, kind of going on and on. So Jesus rose from the dead as proof that he was God and that God accepted his sacrifice. Um, God is known as three persons in the Bible. He's, they call him the Trinity, Triune God. I'm not going to get too in depth on that, but if anyone's been to church, you'll know that there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So anyways, all three are God, um, but we find that they, they're all doing different things, even though they're in unity and they're God. So God the Father raised Jesus from the dead, and you know, Jesus being fully God and fully man, God in the flesh, God in human form, death had no hold on him because he was God, right? So his, his promise to us is, you know, if we repent and we believe in him and we, we trust in him for our salvation, so we trust that what he did on that cross was enough to atone for our sins and make us right with God. If we believe that and we repent and we choose to let go of our old life, and we choose to follow him. And, you know, that would mean, you know, reading our Bibles, getting to know him, have, pursuing a relationship. That's this, this talk is, yes, becoming a Christian. Um, but becoming a Christian is having a relationship with God. Like I said, restoring that relationship that's been broken. Um, we have no relationship with God, the one that created everything, if, if we don't have Jesus. As you can see, Jesus is the significant character, right? He's the, he's God that became human while staying God, like I said, fully man, fully God, living on the earth and then dying, a, obviously a terrible death so that we can be reconciled to God and his promise is eternal life. So that brings me back to the beginning of our conversation. So Jesus he gives us eternal life. So after we die, the promise is that we'll, we'll never die again, but we'll live forever. And I think a way that we can trust that is when we believe in the resurrection of Christ. Jesus was raised from the dead, seen by hundreds of people after he was resurrected. Um, so he promises that after we do die, that he'll resurrect us and that we'll live forever. So... The point of this is, your life is significant, you do have a purpose, and you're not living that purpose if you're living apart from God and Jesus, because they created the earth, they created us, and they created us to serve, you know, God created us to serve him, and uh, he has a better life for us, you know, it seems, you know, before I became a Christian, I, I served myself and I didn't really have any significance. And if you think about the different worldviews, 
you know, if, if God didn't create the world, then your life is essentially pointless. You can say there's a lot of meaning, but as soon as you're dead, that meaning is completely gone. Like I said, you'll be forgotten with your deeds. Most people won't even be remembered at all, except for just their family. And then families keep going and going. Do I know my great, 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 great grandpa and everything he did? And he was a nice guy and, you know, his wife and his children. No, I have no clue, you know. So that's what I wanted to tell you. I wanted to offer you what I was offered. Um, it was over 10 years ago now. And it's been the most valuable, life-changing. The Bible says when you become a Christian, you become a new creature, a new creation. And, and you really do. Um, things change for the better. Things don't get easier, per se. You know, a lot of people don't like this message. But I, I do hope that uh, you'll consider what I said. Because I woke up out of my dream um, feeling the necessity to 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 make this video, which is pretty wild. Um, but I thought, gosh, I'm not going to get to talk to you guys probably. I mean, I guess maybe at a class reunion, but for people to listen to me talk about something like this, you know, it's maybe not the most comfortable thing. But, so yeah, I feel like God wanted me to tell you guys this because of the significance of this happening. Like I said, I mean, it's, it's 6.50 now. I just woke up less than an hour ago with this burden in my heart and just this dream being so real. And uh, I hope it blesses you. And I do hope you all well. And uh, you all take care of yourselves. God bless you. Um, so the way to become a Christian we, I talked about is repenting of our sin, turning away from that disgusting side of us, you know, and uh, turning to having faith in God and what he did, Jesus on the cross. Um, and just ask, you know, the way to, a way you can do this, you know, vocally, if you want to voice it to God. But um, God knows your heart. If, if you're sorry for your sin and sorry for rebelling against him, and you believe that Jesus died and was resurrected and that he has a better life for you. If if you want, you can just pray a, a, a very simple prayer. Um, God knows your heart, so you don't have to pray out loud. You can pray just in your head. But basically, if you just prayed, you know, God, I've sinned against you. I've been your enemy and didn't maybe didn't even think about it. I haven't really cared about you. All I've done is cared about myself. And I just ask that you would save me. I, I ask that you would uh, train me and righteousness. Show me the right way. You know, show me w what is it that I'm supposed to be doing. You know, and uh, please forgive me. Please forgive me for everything that I've done that's offended you. And uh, God will wash you clean if you do that. And if you do, um, do that. You want to pursue you know, a good church. There are many churches and there are a lot of churches that aren't doing what the Bible says. Um, Christians follow what the Bible says because the Bible was inspired by God. So, and then that's where we have all of our accounts of Jesus. So, the way after you, if, if you did, you know, receive Christ as your Savior and you surrender your life to Him, you have to just pursue him. And the way to pursue him is, is through his word. The word of God is what we call the Bible because that's, that's the accounts written of God and what God has done in, throughout time, throughout history. So just really read that Bible and find other Christians that have read it and know it well. And uh, just basically grow in God. It's the most wonderful thing on the planet. It's the most valuable news I've ever been told, and it's eternally valuable, you know. Not only does it just, you know, you get reacquainted with God, you, you get acquainted, maybe I should say, with God. The fact that he gives you eternal life, you live forever, what a gift. I mean, he didn't have to do that, just restoring the relationship would have been good enough. But, so... 
Well, I hope this was at least significant. Probably a little weird and crazy. It's crazy for me because I had no intention of doing this, to be completely honest. I only felt the need when I had woken up. So I do hope all is well with all of you. And maybe I'll see some of you around. Sometimes I do. So God bless you. Hope you have a wonderful day.